<laughs> hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And this, well, this isn't a KEF LS50. It's actually a KEF LS50 Meta. It's being released today, September 22nd. And I am excited. I am really excited about doing this review. And there's so much ground to cover. Let's start at the beginning of the story. In 2012, the original KEF LS50 was my speaker of the year. And it has been one of the most stable reference things I own because I just keep going back to it again and again and again. The original LS50. Matter of fact, I've been using it a lot lately and I just marvel at it, how incredible it is. So the question is for the KEF engineers, how could you make this better? Well, <laughs> here's, I'll cut to the chase. They made it a lot better. And even better, <laughs> they didn't raise the price. The price of the original in 2012, 2013 was $1,500 a pair. This one, new and improved in, in almost every way, $1,500 a pair. And yes, in case you're wondering, is there an active version, the wireless version? Yes, there is a Meta version, but it's funny, it's not called Meta, it's called the LS50 Wireless 2. But I'm not covering that today. I'm just doing the passive version right here. And my impressions of this speaker right away was, it doesn't sound like an LS50. I mean, it does, but it sounds so much better so much more transparent, clear, open, dynamic. Uh, it, it's just a considerable, it's a mega improvement. It looks the same, uh, pretty much, except now it only comes in matte finishes. We'll, I'll get to that later, but, um, and the driver itself, the UniQ driver is the 12th generation UniQ in the original, from 2012, it was the 11th generation UniQ Uni driver. One of the small detail differences that I can't see exactly, but that the uh, tangerine waveguide here has been changed since the original. It looks kind of the same, but they, they say it's changed. I, I believe it. But the big change, the massive change to the design is the meta part. This speaker uses meta absorption technology. You'll note that over most of my career as a writer and here on YouTube, I don't usually talk that much about the, the new feature that makes the new thing sound better than the old thing. Cause usually it's just kind of techno babble BS, right? It's just, come on, who cares, you know? So I, I barely even refer to it, but this one, the meta absorption technology, mm, because when I did the comparison of the original LS50 to this, it's a whole new ball game. And what the well, what meta absorption technology is is a way of is a way of absorbing the back wave of the driver more completely than it's ever been done before. Because here's the thing: the the sound that's coming out of the front of the driver and filling your room, well, it's it is what it is, right? But what about the sound coming off the back of the driver, which is just as loud, except now in a confined space within a cabinet? What happens to all that energy? That is, that is uh, one of the most fundamental uh, goals of any speaker designer is how to handle that back wave and absorb it as much as possible. Now, the, the, the simplest way, and a lot of people do it, is put you know, some sort of wadding inside the cabinet, wool or some other material, just stuff it in there and that'll absorb it and turn the energy into heat. And it works to some degree, absolutely. But this speaker with absor meta absorption <laughs> technology doesn't have any wadding inside the cabinet. It just has this, this maze that I'm showing you right now that's on the back of the driver. I'll show you this image of it on the back. So it's about a half inch thick. It's about, I think, three inches in diameter. It, diameter. it looks like a maze. And it is basically absorbing uh, the energy. It has 32 channels, this maze does, and each channel absorbs a different frequency. It, it sounds kind of BSE, I admit, but 
it works. There's no other real significant difference between original LS50 and LS50 Meta. What does it sound like, you're asking? You're talking to your screen right now, I can hear you. Uh, what does it sound like? Well, I can use words like transparent and open till the cows come home or whatever comes home. But here is the thing. It sounds like an open baffle speaker. Basically a baffle with drivers attached to it without a box. So the back wave of the driver just goes out into the room against the back wall of your room. <clears throat> That's what an open baffle speaker is. So there's no problem with the sound bouncing around inside the box that needs to be absorbed because it's just out in the room. And similarly, um, MagnaPan speakers, no box. The back wave of the driver just goes out into the room behind the drive, behind the speaker. Okay, this one, incredibly enough, in this comparatively small box, the energy coming off the back wave of the, the UniQ driver is absorbed some gigantic amount, I think 90% from 600 or 650 hertz up. 90% of that energy is absorbed by the meta absorber. Of course, full range absorption would be even better. And maybe there'll be a meta two down the road. But right now I'm listening to this speaker and it has that open quality, like, a, like an open baffle speaker. That's the best way to put into words what I'm experiencing from this speaker. It is so clean, so transparent because the problem with the back wave that's being trapped inside the box of a, of a, of a typical box speaker is that that energy has to come out somewhere and some of it comes out through the driver itself that created the energy in the first place. Th does that make sense to you? In other words, it bleeds through the driver. So the meta absorption technology, the absorber is absorbing a significant amount of that energy inside the box. Therefore, we're hearing clearer sound. We're hearing more of what the driver is producing and less of the sound bouncing around inside the cabinet. Yes, by the way, I should mention there are other differences between original LS50 and the Meta version. There's better bracing inside the box. When I do the, the knuckle wrap test, this feels incredibly inert, incredibly inert. I mean, so does the original, but the, there's a difference in frequency. It's a lower frequency tap on this one than it is on an original. The back panel, which I'll show you now, is just sleeker. It's slightly curved. It's just, it's just a more beautiful speaker. I always thought the original LS50 was a classic from the second I saw it. It was like, this is unlike anything else. It's modern, it's beautiful, it's functional. The way the baffle curves away from the driver to minimize reflections. And to think that we waited eight years to get this improvement that Kef was it going to make incremental improvements down the road because it was such a popular speaker? They said, it's fine the way it is. They just waited until they could make something that was a significant improvement over the original. Tell, so Steve, tell us about the details of the done, some specs. We want to know specs. Okay, I'll give you some specs. The coincident drivers are five and a quarter inch with uh, an aluminum dome tweeter in the center there with the tangerine guide. Impedance is rated at 8 ohms, but it drops down to 3.5 ohms. So I would recommend, I think Kef recommends, you use it with an amplifier that can handle low impedance loads. Sensitivity is also on the low side, just like the original 85 dB. But maybe because of the meta absorption, it doesn't feel like a hard to drive speaker. I use it with the 30 watt per channel Riga IO integrated amp. It's $595, it play these speakers very, very well. Now one spec that is extremely impressive is the minus six dB frequency, meaning the lowest bass. Kef claims 26 Hertz. That is <laughs> extraordinary. Um, but I ran tones through the speaker and I wasn't getting 26 Hertz, but I was getting down into the 30 hertz range. Wasn't playing it super loud. It's not gonna shake the walls. If you're into low bass, you should still get a subwoofer. But in terms of the overall impression of the speaker, it 
does have some low base weight to it, more than the original LS50. I think it's interesting, by the way, that KEF chose to introduce meta-absorption technology on the LS50 as opposed to, you know, their higher end speakers like the Blade. And what's going to happen starting next year in 2021, they will, it will trickle up instead of trickling down from high to the more affordable models, it's going to trickle up and I guess possibly down. But I did confirm that the higher end models would start to be using this meta absorption technology. That's, that's kind of cool. So it comes out in the affordable range and then goes to the higher end. Nice. That's very nice. Regarding power amplifiers beyond the Riga IO that I used, I also pulled out the Shit Agir 20 watts channel class A. Again, low powered amp, but had no problem driving the speakers to satisfying levels and dynamics. The first watt J2, another low powered amp. The Past Labs XA25, 25 watts of channel, 50 watts into four ohms. And the monster amp I have here, the Past Labs XA100.5, which is a 100 watt per channel, well, mono block amplifier. But the, but the main amp I used for the bulk of the reviewing was the XA25, because that is, well, the highest resolution amplifier in my collection. And that's what these speakers do so well, is detail, clarity, um, just so pure. That I was using this uh, Modern Jazz Quartet album, great recording, uh, and it has lots of, in addition to the transients on the, on the vibes from Milt Jackson, uh, there's a lot of high percussion instruments, bells, little details, and stuff like that. And this speaker was so clean, so pure, so resolute, and effortless. There you go. There's another word that I'm going to cover soon. But, you know, it just does that thing. And spatial cues, depth, openness, truly extraordinary, like an open baffle speaker, like a MagnaPan, like the Pure Audio Project. It has that, well, unboxy quality. If you go back to a box, uh, even the original KEF LS50, well, it sounds more like a box. And when you go to the LS50 Meta, the box just goes away. <laughs> that is so cool. So to test the mid-range, I pulled out some Mel Torme records. He's a jazz singer. He, I didn't appreciate Mel Torme until maybe 10 years ago. He passed away a long time ago. But he had this smooth voice. He was, they, his nickname was the Velvet Fog. But he was, he was so jazzy in the best sense. Where a lot of jazz vocalists are kind of, eh, I don't get them. But he is, was so good. Such a craftsman, but so at ease about it. It's just amazing. And anyway, his recordings do tend to um, put his voice out in a very natural way. And here with the meta, wow, it was just so complete. The complete Mel appeared between the left and right speakers. Just incredible. And then in contrast to Mel, <laughs> I used John Lennon's Imagine record. Now there's this box set that came out maybe two years ago. And it has what's called the raw mixes for the complete album. Imagine, in other words, without reverberation added or EQ or anything. It's just what happened when they laid down the tracks. And when it's so rare to hear John Lennon's voice without reverb, even the Beatles days. He always was smothering his voice in, in effects and things and sound. But here it's just pure John Lennon. And wow, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about all these years of listening to the Beatles and listening to John, but hearing them like this was whew, great, really incredible. I know some of you guys are asking me to do more comparisons, and where possible, I do them, but I don't usually have speakers, a room or a basement full of speakers that I can just pull out and do these comparisons. But I just reviewed the ELAC Unified 2.0 UB52 speakers, which is also has a coincident mid-range tweeter driver <clears throat> and a separate woofer. That speaker is $600. Normally, I wouldn't do the comparison because that's a $600 a pair of speaker, and this is $1,500, so it's not 
it's not a fair comparison. And in fact, it's not a fair comparison because, well, does the Unify do anything better than this speaker? Well, maybe the bass punch because it is a three-way speaker has a separate woofer. I can't say that it goes deeper, but it's punchier. It's got more kick to it than the LS50 Meta. But this one, the LS50 Meta, is in every way, every other way, a much, much, much better speaker. It's transparency, it's refinement, it's opening, it's imaging, everything about it just clobbers <laughs> the, the ELAC. I mean, but it's not fair. It costs almost three times the price. So yeah, it's better. But price schmice, it's a vastly better speaker. So there's, there's a comparison I could do. But I did a lot of comparisons comparing original LS50 to the Meta. And I love the LS50, the original. I do, that's why it stuck around here for so long. Uh, and, I, and I have affection for that speaker. But the new version is just a huge leap forward in terms of transparency, detail, all that stuff. The imaging, the depth, the cues, just, well, let's put it this way. If the Meta is a 10 in those areas I just referred to, then the original LS50 is a 6.5, something like that, 6.57, right? It's, a, it's significantly better. They look exactly the same. The two speakers look so similar, basically twins, unless you see the back. Um, but the new speaker is so much better than the original. Now, I will say, here is the one catch to the Meta. The Meta is a high resolution speaker. You play, uh, I was playing um, T-Rex's Electric Warrior record. It's a great record. I love T-Rex, but it's not a great recording. There's a lot of distortion, a lot of harshness, edge, compression, EQ. It's in there, you know? And you know what? The Meta lets you hear all those nasties. And going to the original LS50, they're, they're tapped down. They're a little less, less in your face, less aggressive, right? So if you listen to a lot of very compressed, equalized, commercial, pop, mainstream recordings, you know what? You might be better off with an original LS50. Now, I will tell you that it is a discontinued model, but there's a zillion of them out there, and I have a lot feeling that a lot of people will be trading up to the meta, so snagging a used LS50 is probably not going to be that hard. Although I do wish, though I don't think it's happening, I do wish that Kef continued to make the original, make the original and the meta, and sell the original for $900 or $1,000, so significant price differential, but that's not happening. I'm listening to vinyl. Oh, it was Goosebump City. Every time I played a different, it was one of those things I was pulling out records because, oh, how does this sound? How does this sound? Oh, I'm looking at right now the uh, Morricone Fistful of Dollars album. Wow. <laughs> uh, this, this is one of those records. I just had it stuck in somewhere. It shouldn't have been, so I didn't know I had it for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. I pulled it out last night and I was playing that record and all those weird vocalizations and spiky percussion things. Was, wow, it's coming out of these $1,500 speakers. Incredible truly incredible and i switched back to the original ls50 and everything got tapped down it was there just <laughs> less so let's put it it was just less there with the original like i said i i love it i i don't want to babble on how much i love the original ls50 but i do i mean i can't think of too many products that have lasted in this system for eight years that one has because it was a go-to reference for a really long time. This has been my review of the Kef LS50 Meta. And I'm, I, I'm, having, I'm having a great time, as you can clearly see. But I'm so eager to hear what everybody else thinks of the speakers, what, what other reviewers think, what the buyers of the speakers think. Because I really, in case you haven't picked up on it just yet, this is a breakthrough product. I really believe it. But there is this caveat. If you listen to nasty recordings, it might not be the best way to go. This is an audiophile speaker. It's the better the recording, you're just gonna hear it better and better and better. Crappy recordings, eh, gonna sound crappier, <laughs> possibly, or maybe not, but 
so it, it's, it's for the right kind of person. The right kind of audiophile will love this speaker. And uh, as I said, I can't wait to see what everybody else thinks of it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you dig it, mm, please subscribe. Uh, we're on our way, all of us. We are on our way to 150,000 subscribers. That will be a day. And it'll probably happen if present trends continue in late October, early November. That's exciting. I just passed uh, 27 million views. Well, not just, but a couple a week or so ago, I did. Um, so things are going well. Things are going very, very well. By the way, I think you guys should check out my Patreon, which can be found at p a t r e o n dot com slash audiophiliac. And yes, I will link to that below. And by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier. You can now subscribe to Patreon with dollars, pounds, or euros, your, your choice. What else? Well, we can talk about, there's playlists. The playlists, some people can't find the playlists. They're either above, when you're on the main page, my head, or below. Look around, they are there. And there's playlists for speaker reviews, and headphone reviews, and electronics reviews, and of course, music reviews. And there's interviews. There's interviews with Eric Alexander from Tecton, with Nelson Pass, with uh, John Atkinson, John Grado, Harry Weisfeld. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. Anyway, um, I think my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.